Hello everyone. My name is Lata. I am a senior technical account manager at AWS. In this video, I will show you how to protect your web applications from fraudulent activities such as credential stuffing, credential cracking, and fake account creation attacks using AWS Web Application Firewall, that is WAF. These attacks not only cause revenue loss, but also damage reputation and lose customer trust to your business. AWS WAF offers two features to tackle this issue. First one is account takeover prevention to prevent account takeover attacks through managed rule ATP. Second one is account creation fraud prevention to prevent fake account creation through managed rule ACFP. In this video, let's see how AWS WAF detects and enables us to manage such malicious requests. Let's begin with ATP. For which I will show you how to configure ATP rules in WAF console, which will detect account takeover attacks. To demo this, I have a unicorn rental web application fronted by Amazon CloudFront. I have attached a WAF protection pack to the CloudFront distribution and have enabled logging. To configure ATP rule, I click on view and edit rules, add rule, I select AWS managed rule groups. I scroll down to the paid rule group section to add account takeover prevention. I choose the default version. I will input the login path. For request inspection, I choose the payload to be form encoded. I input the username and password field of my web application. For the response inspection, I choose the component type to be status code and I put the success and failure codes respectively. As you can see, ATP has a number of built-in rules based on which it identifies attributes such as stolen credentials, multiple requests that emerge from single session or IP, username or password traverses, and hence identify malicious requests. I click on create rule. Now my ATP rule set is all configured. Fraud prevention rules are not recommended at the top of your protection pack. At the end of the video, I am going to share some cost control best practices. Now let us test the ATP rule that we configured. I am using a curl command to access the web application using test credentials that are identified to be stolen. We can see that the request was successful. Let me pick the request ID and check the logs to see how ATP handled it. I go to the CloudWatch login sites, select the log group I have configured and run the CloudWatch log query. We can see that the request is allowed. But ATP has put label called credential compromised since it has recognized that an attempt to log in was made with credentials that are identified to be stolen. ATP does not block a single or fewer attempts. It needs to be volumetric. This is because a single request could also mean legit users are using their credentials which are being compromised. We would still like to notify them or the application that the credentials were compromised so that they can take actions such as resetting their passwords. Let us see how to redirect such legit users before testing volumetric attempts and getting locked out. To do this, I go to the view and edit rule and click on add rule. Now I choose custom rule. Custom rule again, click on next, give the rule a name and I ask it to inspect on labels. I choose the label credential compromised which we saw earlier in the logs. I will enable the custom response and input the status code as 401. For the response body, I create a custom response body, give it a name and input the HTML code that essentially redirects the legit user to change the password. I click on create rule and we should see it working. I am using the same curl command that I used earlier. We can see the request is now being blocked by displaying the custom message that I created. 
With this, I have successfully redirected the legit users whose credentials are identified to be stolen to reset their password. Let us now try multiple account takeover attempts and see what happens. After multiple attempts, we can see the requests are getting blocked. I pick a request ID and check the logs. We can see that the request is being blocked. Let me expand to check in detail. We can see that ATP has identified the request to be volumetric request with multiple takeover attempts and hence it has blocked the request. With this, we have successfully tested the functionality of ATP. Now let us proceed with ACFP. For this, I will show you how to configure ACFP rule in the WAF protection pack which detects fake account creation. To demo this, I am using the registration page of the Unicorn Rentals application. Configuring ACFP is similar to ATP. I click on View and Edit Rules, Add Rule, I select AWS Managed Rule Groups. I scroll down to Paid Rules section to enable Account Creation Fraud Prevention Rule Group. I input the registration page and account creation page path. For request inspection, I choose the payload to be form encoded. I input the username, password, email, address and phone number fields of my web application. To inspect the response, I select the status code and I input the success and failure status codes respectively. Similar to ATP, ACFP also has built-in rules to identify malicious requests. However, the rule action deferred to be challenge captcha or block for different rules. I click on create rule. With that we should be able to see ACFP in action. I am using the curl command again with the same stolen credential that I used earlier for ATP. But this time to create an account instead. We do not see any success message. I pick the request ID to check in the logs. I am going to the CloudWatch Insights and I run the CloudWatch log query. We can see that this request has been challenged. Let me expand to have more insights. We can see there are a number of labels emitted and one of those is credential compromised. The terminating rule ID is ACFP with the action challenge. Let me now try volumetric fake account creation attempt and see what happens. Let me pick the request ID and check it in the logs. We can see it is challenged and also it has identified that request to be volumetric. Based on the labels, we can also create custom rules to block such requests like we did for ATP. With that, now we have also seen ACFP in action. My application is now protected from fraudulent attacks such as ATP and ACFP. One important note is that you need to have ATP and ACFP rule groups configured after the custom rules and AWS free managed rule groups to have cost under control as shown on the screen. Refer to the video description for more details and learn more about these features. Thank you for watching.